The year is 2003. Famed two-weight world champion James Tony has been laying the smack down on his contemporaries for over 15 years, and while a few moments of failure have peeked their ugly head into his career spanning over 70 fights, there's no denying that he could give any fighter at the top of their game a battle that would have them on their toes from the moment they step into the ring until they leave in a metaphorical coffin. Yeah, I'm, I'm undestructible. Don't forget that when I'm ready, I'm undestructible, baby. I'll fight anybody out there anywhere, anytime. Next! James Tony has once again found himself looking for another title, this time in the cruiserweight division, and the undefeated Vasily Jirov seems to be the one thing stopping him from being reunited with the cold steel of an IBF belt yet again. Today's video was recommended by Pat Nelson. If there are any other fights you'd like to see in the future, make sure to let us know in the comments below. Welcome back to Boxing After Dark. Tonight we're journeying back in time to a staple of the cruiserweight division, one of HBO's many classic bouts of the 2000s. In a battle of undefeated versus uncontested, Vasily Jirov is fighting the toughest challenge of his career so far, while James Tony is embarking on a feat so few before him have ever succeeded in, with intent to make it look easy. Let us get into it. James had been ever so slightly shimmering away from relevance in the public eye as his career went on, and with 15 years of fighting in the bank, Tony himself would confess his career relied on this upcoming bout, a last shot at stardom, and a monumental win for the resume. Lights out of Juro! I'm coming for you, baby! You ain't never a punk! You've been ducking me for two years! Now it's time to put up a shut up! Bottom line! Vasily wanted to make an impression on his newfound audience in the USA, and that he did, becoming somewhat of a boogeyman in the cruiserweight division that many feared to fight head on, despite a slight lack of impressive opposition. Besides his victory against Arthur Williams, his last victory against the previous WBA middleweight champion Jorge Castro was his most notable, and although Jorge was over 100 fights into his career and seemed to be noticeably slower than he had just a couple years prior, it didn't negate the impressive showing Jirov put on for everyone to witness. Unsurprisingly, Vasily Jirov came into the bout a heavy favorite among the public and professionals alike, with a slight decrease in quality fights in recent years from James Tony, along with his ever-growing age jump in weight, and Jirov seemingly getting more impressive with every fight, it felt almost unfair for such a matchup to have even been created, but Tony, being the independent, fiery individual he'd been since childhood, took the odds with a smile on his face and a spring in his step as the night grew closer. On the 26th of April in 2003, the bout finally arrived. As Tony makes his short but impressionable walk to the ring, it's clear this isn't a fight to pay the bills but one of courage and self-belief for a man who's lived the highest of highs and lowest of lows. Jirov finds his way to the ring soon after, and keeps himself ready and raring to go as he bounces and skips his way towards the middle of the arena. As the rules are recounted, the boxers touch gloves, and the bell rings for the first time of the night. One key tactical element, Vasily Jirov, as we mentioned, will bend over to try to go to James Tony's belly. Can Tony catch him with an uppercut and yes. change his life? Yes, he oh. can. Observers say, I heard you say this earlier. And Jiroff hasn't gotten to that bread basket yet. Hard right hand by Tony. There's a left of the body by Jiroff. Mental pressure from round to round. Like few opponents have been able to do to James Tony. Yes, yes. Hard punches by Jiroff there. Hard right hand by Tony. Backs Jiroff up. Jiroff was the one who was landing combinations, and now Tony fighting hard off the ropes, and Jiroff bangs him back into them. At a little bit faster pace than he normally fights, that you have a great advantage. Well thrown, straight right hand by Tony. Jiroff with a good left to the belly. Body shot him. Tony didn't like it. Stance as Jiroff rakes him with the left, comes back with the right to the top of the head, another right on the temple. Jiroff throwing more upstairs than Tony might have expected, and landing. And even right hand. And the, the pace to support himself. And Vasily got the left to the belly again. And right now, it looks pretty rough for James. I'm, I'm surprised that James hasn't thrown his left hook more. The deal, he's got new incentive. Low blow by Jiroff there. And this one should give James Tony five minutes to recover. And Tony comes right back out with aggression, firing right hands to try to show Jiroff. He's not diminished in any way by the low blow. And the big right hand by Tony, and Jiroff keeps throwing. Although without any balance. Right on the belt line by Jiroff. The left hook, he really have something going for himself. 
When they trade at close range, Tony's quicker. Shot of punches, too. Get right here. To go into a fight with a new mouthpiece. No. He's down on the arc for that punch. That's enough for James. Big fights, too. Physical activity in round four. Favors Jiro. The most punches ever landed in a championship fight, that's Vasily Jiro. That's why we expected a great fight tonight. Uh, that's right. For the bread basket. Body shots backing Tony off again. I'm not sure how much more Jiroff can let his hands go in this situation. Takes a hard right hand and, 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 you know. Let him go. Oh, what a display of counter shots by James uh. Tony. What a round. Very good, very good. James Tony has one of his greatest rounds yet through the sixth and counters beautifully as Jiroff attempts to mount pressure. Tony himself begins to take the offensive through the final minute and continues to land beautifully. I got it also a very, very close fight. 57-57, three rounds apiece. I got it all even to this point. All the, all the odd rounds to James Tony, all the even rounds to Vasily Jira. Vasily's offense is his defense. Lest you think, Dan Zane, well, I didn't tell him about that. Yeah, but so far, he seems like he got the, the best of every one of the exchanges at the tail end of it. Yeah. Tony's bread basket. It's astonishing, Emmanuel, yeah. that men can do this. That's it, that's it. Another low blow. This is going to cost you off a point. Yep. Low blow. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. <laughs> it is. And now the last time Tony and seems to be more Tony. measured. Veteran boxing promoter Dan Goosen has his third promotional business at play now. A brand new partnership with Southern California real estate mogul Ronnie Tudor. And he's built the whole organization around his belief that James Tony is going to rise back to the superstar level. Who's to say, James, I'm going to ride on your stardom. And Tony has responded to that. He says, I'm going to take the big goose to the top. Simple. Big left hook for Tony. The one point deficit that would have come. Round eight finds Jiroff being deducted a point for sparse but continuous stream of low blows over the fight, but works hard and achieves a well deserved 9 9 round. Now, particularly at the end of the last round, I could see it when he went back to the corner. And now his legs begin to top. Yeah. Not at all. Tony slipping right back into position for Jiroff to bust him across the chops, and Tony goes to the body with good effect. Vasily Jirov, 5-3, one even, 86-84, Vasily Jirov. If Jirov would ever just take a break and lay back for a minute, Tony would take complete control. Right hand by Tony, wobble Jirov. Jirov takes three more shots in a row. Tony's big opportunity right here. Yes, it is. And Jirov is trying to protect himself the only way he knows how, by going forward and throwing more punches. This has been a big round for Tony. That's the Big left hook by Tony, and the right hand, and the bell saves Jirov as he wobbles against the ropes. Jirov landed 15 out of 104 punches in that round, Tony 44 out of 77, 60% of his punches. Yeah. James went to the uh, corner to end of the, I think the ninth round, totally exhausted, and comes back and fights such a great fight, the tenth round. And he's got it, and, and, and. and Jirov wobbles Tony with the right hand. Tony not throwing back. Jirov has no energy. Backs out of the corner on his own. Now James begins to counter again and catches Jirov with a big uh, left hook. Yeah. And here goes Jirov back to the body. And the thing about it, Jirov can box when he wants to, too, from his big amateur bag. I saw him get on his toes and box. But the strategy... Jirov, you know, he looked nearly out of it at the end of the 10th. He has come back and dominated the 11th round. When you look at how bad he was hurt, 
but he's never, never back. The fight of the year comes down to the 12th round. Six, four, one even for Senu Chiro. That this ring is wet. If you haven't paid much attention to the cruiserweight division before now, maybe you will in the future. This would be the race. He won't let James get in the punching rooms. Giroff is going to left hook again. The man is going again. Now James' experience is coming through now. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this. Oh my God. Oh, look at this. He better do Julio Cesar and run across the ring right away. Oh! Will the two-point round have won the fight for Tony? Maybe. After a fight of punishment from both sides, James Tony finally manages to score a beautiful knockdown with only 20 seconds left of the fight. Giroff manages to miraculously return to his feet. But alas, the bell tolls, and one of the greatest fights of the 21st century so far is put into the hands of the judges. Particular. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Glenn Feldman scores the contest. 117 to 109. 116 to 110. 117 to 109 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new RBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, James. And James Tony has resurrected his career with a magnificent performance against Vasily Giroff. After the announcement of a unanimous decision victory, the crowd cheers at the prospect of what's just been accomplished. James Tony has become a three-weight world champion, and Vasily Giroff has lost his title after 10 consecutive defenses. I'll fight anybody anywhere. I'm, I'm having fun. Man, this guy, he couldn't do nothing with me tonight. I told you. What he brought to the table was not going to be enough. I was ready. I told you all day. Well, it was a brilliant and skillful yes. performance. I bring on Lynx Lewis. After such a magnificent victory, it seemed the only direction James Tony could go was down, as he had achieved just what he'd set out to do. But as we know now in retrospect, James Tony was far from finished making glorious statements with one of it not his greatest hour coming in his next fight, as he handily beat the legendary real deal, Evander Holyfield. Bottom line, Goose Tudor, Evander Holyfield's a great fighter. Hey, I watched him when I was a kid, I loved the guy, but I had to do what I had to do. That's what I get paid to do. Bottom line, Detroit in the house. You, 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 Stewart, James. I got your message, baby. Let's try and have, you a, know it. Let's try and have a decent interview no, and a conversation have, here. Have, Hold on a second here. Look, look, look. Soon after, Tony would do good on a previous promise and move up to the heavyweight division, wanting to become a four-weight champion. But despite his victory over John Ruiz, Tony never got a fourth title due to a failed drug test. Not too long into the future, Tony would begin to stumble physically and mentally in the ring as his age increased, losing back-to-back -back fights with Samuel Peter and reaching a draw with Haseem Rahman for the WBC heavyweight title. After 10 years passed from his last title shot and four unimpressive defeats with minor victories sprinkled in between, James Tony would finally retire, having one of the most impressive resumes and careers in modern boxing. And although he had his fair share of controversies and detractions, the beautiful flashing lights Tony had put on along with the ones he knocked out never truly died, and his achievements continued to live on. James, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this fight between Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank. Are you watching it with interest? Who do you think will win? And are you looking forward to taking one of them on? I don't care who wins. I'll fight either one of them. I mean, I'll fight both of them on the same night if you want to. <laughs>